All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a special one because it encompasses a cross section of both of my key subscriber counts, which I think are from either the military community or the credit card slash personal finance community. If you go to my most popular videos, those are the most popular ones and the most that I've actually gotten subscribers from. And so what I thought I'd do today is put together a video about the best credit cards for military folks which I think is a lot of you out there that are currently subscribed to my channel. And if you're not already, welcome. I hope you enjoy what you see on this channel. And uh, I'm gonna make today's video a very useful one. So if you guys are not aware already, if you're in the military and you're on active duty orders, one of the key benefits is the SCRA and MLA benefits. Now, to quickly break down the difference between these two types of benefits, the Service Members Civil Relief Act is for accounts opened prior to military service, which means if you opened a credit card before you actually joined or enlisted or went to OCS or any of that stuff, this would be what applies. There's a 6% interest rate cap, and you also get all annual fees waived on credit cards. This applies to all credit products and loan products, and so you have a 6% cap. Now, in terms of MLA benefits, the Military Lending Act, this is for accounts that are open during military service. Now, the interest rate cap on these accounts is 36%, but again, you also get all annual fees waived on credit cards, which is a great thing that gives you the opportunity to get credit cards that normally have a very high annual fee for absolutely free. Now, I do want to mention that if you're a reservist and on active duty orders, the same benefits apply, again, as MLA benefits, especially if you apply for these things while you're on active duty. Now, if you're on a two-week AT or annual training period for reservists, generally, that's not going to be enough time for the credit agencies or credit issuer to check your credit during that two-week period for you to get that credit card, as well as for you to be actually in the DOD system for it to show up as active duty for these credit issuers to recognize that and apply these benefits. I've tried this previously during a two week AT type situation or when I was on orders for let's, let's say a school. Um, but if for example, you're going to Bullock or a military school that puts you on orders which is active duty for training orders for, you know, let's say six months or something like that, then you should be good to go because you'll be placed in the system as being on active duty. And if it doesn't come through the system automatically with the credit issuer, when you apply for that credit card as active duty for those benefits to be automatically applied, all you should do is call them. Uh, usually they'll be pretty cooperative, whether it's Chase Capital One or American Express or any other credit issuer for you to then apply those benefits through an application that you can submit your orders to just demonstrate that you are indeed on active duty. Now, another key question I usually get with these benefits being applied to your account in terms of the annual fee being waived is whether or not they're actually going to check, let's say the year after. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm currently a reservist that's on a deployed status. So I'm currently on active duty orders for the whole year. And so what that means is that during this year, any accounts I apply for will have MLA benefits applied. That means that no annual fees will be applied. And recently I applied for a few different Chase credit cards, which I was approved for, and no annual fee was applied. Now, whether or not the credit issuer is going to check your active duty status year after year to see if they need to you know, apply that credit card fee is largely going to be based off of anecdotal experience as well as the actual credit card issuer. I can say from my experience that when I first opened my Capital One Venture card, I believe this was back in 2018, uh, this was when I was on active duty, which I then since went on a reserve status, um, and then back on active duty. But at the time I was on active duty and every year since then, I have not been charged for the annual fee. So if you guys have had other experiences, feel free to drop it in the comment section below, just uh, so you know, you guys have those data points about those specific cases. I will say that something to consider is that if you do apply for a card that does have an annual fee while you're on active duty, let's say you apply for the American Express Platinum card, uh, there is something that you can do, which is call the credit card issuer like Amex and let them know that you haven't gotten the value that you'd expected out of the card and request for either a point bonus for, you know, a retention offer basically to keep you in the system and to have that credit card thereafter. Now, obviously, if you don't want to do that and you just want to cancel the card, it's not a great idea because that usually hurts your credit, especially if it's an older card. And so my recommendation would be to downgrade the card, let's say for the Amex Platinum, you can downgrade it to the green card, which I think has $150 annual fee, or if you apply for, for example, like the Delta Sky Miles Reserve, it's $550 a year, but you can then downgrade that to the, the lowest level Delta card that Amex offers is a $0 annual fee card, and you can obviously downgrade to that from the one that costs $550 if 
you're not able to get that fee waived for the following year, and you're not able to get those benefits out of the card. Now, I think those are all important things to understand before we actually talk about the list, because the list actually doesn't matter so much. I think it's basically a matter of getting pretty much what the best cards are out there, because frankly, if you're on active duty, you're on orders, and you're gonna get these benefits applied, which means there's no annual fee, you might as well, at least in my case, uh, get the most prestigious cards out there or the cards with the best benefits that you can actually utilize uh, such that the year after, you know, you basically get infinite return on that card because it costs zero dollars for the fee and you can utilize, you know, all the travel credits, the dining credits, um, any status you get with lounges, all that stuff. But with that understanding of how these benefits work, and whether or not that fee will be applied year after year, let's talk about some of the best credit cards you can get while on active duty, especially for military folks. As I just mentioned, some of the most prestigious cards with the best benefits, I think are gonna give you the most bang for your buck, if you wanna call it that, because your buck is gonna be zero dollars, because you don't have to actually pay for it. So get the most prestigious cards if that's your goal, and if that's what your credit can afford you. And the number one would be, of course, the American Express Platinum. What else did you think I was gonna say? Of course, it's gonna be Amex Plat, right? It's a $695 card, which is currently the highest annual fee for a premium travel rewards credit card that isn't invited only if there's a more expensive one out there you guys let me know but i know for a fact that amex does apply mla and scra benefits it's freaking called american express great card with great benefits and especially if you don't have to worry about outweighing the cost of the annual fee with the utilization of the benefits it's honestly a no-brainer again i have other videos on my channel explaining the benefits and how to use them of the amex platinum as well as the point system but uh, that's not what this video is about I'm kind of just talking about what these cards are as well as how the benefits work and which ones you should be looking for since we're at it we're going to talk about the rest of the amex lineup which is going to include the american express gold card which for a lot of you folks out there i think is going to be a great option because the annual fee is a lot lower so if you end up having to pay that in the future it's a lot easier to make that annual fee a wash because of how easy it is to utilize the benefits that the card has in terms of its 4x back on dining and groceries which is restaurants and takeout as well as actual grocery store purchases. So it's everything that you could either cook or buy to eat in a restaurant. I don't know how else you eat unless you go hunting for your food and you're not paying for it anyway. Besides the platinum and the gold, I think Amex has a bunch of other great offerings, which I've talked about previously. That includes the Delta Sky Miles Reserve, which is normally a prestige credit card, which is used for the status. But if you can get that status for $0, you might as well. Another great one is the Amex Hilton Honors Aspire, another card that I have in my wallet. If you'll notice, these are mostly cards that I currently Currently hold myself and uh, I'll probably talk about later on in my credit card strategy or the cards that I have in my wallet because it's easier to contextualize what the cards are that I have because I can personally speak to the experience that I've had with them uh, and the benefits I've been able to actually utilize. So enough about Amex. Let's move on to Chase, another great credit card issuer, which has a lot more offerings than I think has the most offerings of any credit card issuer and has, of course, a trifecta and a bunch of other ways you can utilize a mix of their cards to get the most bang for your buck and the most benefits. Again, the bang for your buck is your buck is zero. And so there's no, no harm, no foul getting pretty much any of them if you can get approved. First one list, of course, going to be the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Everybody loves the CSR and uh, I actually applied for it this year while I was on active duty and had the MLA benefits applied immediately, which is great. Frankly, I was a little bit concerned about getting approved for the card because I know Chase is pretty tough on their 524 rule. And I had just gone over the cusp of the four credit cards within that 24 month period. The 12th month had just been elapsed. And so 13th month is when I applied for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. I was approved for it. And I uh, had about a 780 credit score at the time and had actually applied for three other credit cards this year. Two of which were Amex though, which don't do a hard pull uh, when you apply for new Amex products when you're already an existing customer. Just great thing about American Express. But I also got the Amazon Prime Rewards card, which is a, another great offering, but it's also $0 a year. Although the fee is actually captured through having to pay for Prime. But the Amazon Prime card, not part of this list. Just wanted to mention it for you guys, for your situational awareness. So if we talk about the Chase Sapphire Reserve, we can't talk about it without talking about the Chase Sapphire Preferred. That is probably most people's card of choice from Chase, just because of the lower annual fee only being $100. But again, you can downgrade to the Chase Sapphire Preferred from the Chase Sapphire Reserve if you call Chase and make that arrangement with them. So my recommendation and my, my course of action for this is that since I've gotten the Chase Sapphire Reserve, for whatever reason next year, if they decide to charge me for the annual fee, and if they've checked that on active duty, I'm going to go ahead and downgrade this card to the Chase Sapphire Preferred because it has a still pretty good earning capacity and some of the 
similar benefits, as well as the CSR being a card that has a lot of overlap with the MX Platinum. And so I don't wanna have a bunch of cards with the same benefits because it makes it a little bit more difficult to utilize all of them, uh, frankly, because having them double stacked usually doesn't work and it doesn't benefit you because let's say you have access to lounges with the MX Platinum, you don't need that access with other cards because you've already gotten in with the MX Platinum. You only need to get in once. Besides the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the rest of the cards, there are great offerings as well, but those are the more premium ones that have a higher annual fee, you know, among some of the other Chase offerings. And so take a look in the portal, see what you like, see what you don't like. And, uh, I would say personally, getting one that has an annual fee while you're on active duty is great because you get it for free while you're on active duty. The last credit card issue we want to touch on quickly is Capital One because I am a loyal Capital One customer in terms of a, you know, 360 checking standpoint and having their banking products um, as well as yeah, other financial products outside of their credit cards. Now, Capital One, of course, has a few credit card offerings. Not all of them have an annual fee, but some of them do. Two of them, namely, which are the Venture X, which is their newest credit card offering. It does have the lowest annual fee out of the premium travel rewards credit card offerings outside of, you know, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the Amex Platinum. Uh, the Venture X is usually now part of that mix in terms of what a good option is um, for that space. And so I would say Venture X is a pretty good value or a great value if you get it for free for zero dollars and if they charge it the same way as they do for the capital one venture card which is the one that i have that i have not been charged the annual fee since i joined the military which was many years ago and i haven't been on active duty the entire time then i would say the venture x might be the best value because if you could never have to pay the annual fee on the venture x and it was always a free card then it's almost a no-brainer that that would be the best option but once again, anecdotal experience. So if you guys have experienced otherwise or have other data points, feel free to drop them in the comment section below so other folks can utilize that useful information. So while I would say that primarily sums up what the you know expensive and premium travel rewards credit cards are that you can get for free while on active duty, I will say that being on active duty or being in the military, what the best card uh, or best cards might be for being in the military, especially if you're stationed on an active duty installation or deployed downrange where they have you know an operating base with with a next or you know a defect or not a defect but if they have an exchange or something where you can purchase things on a military base including gas i would say a great option is the usaa cash rewards card if you're in the military and you don't know about usaa you're probably stolen valor because usaa is pretty much the face of the military's banking and financial products because it is very military friendly and if you didn't know already you have to be in the military to have a USA account. And so USA is pretty great. I have them for my home insurance as well, for my homeowner's policy back home in Texas, because I think they're very military friendly. Once again, have very good customer service. I don't think they outsource as much of their stuff so you can actually talk to somebody that knows what you're talking about. You don't have to repeat yourself three, four times on the phone. Um, but. That's not what we're talking about here. Basically, USA, the cash rewards credit card is pretty good. It gives you a 5X return on military bases. And once again, this includes gas stations on military bases. A 5X return is a very good return if we're considering the rest of the spending categories and what you would normally get as a return on you know military bases, let's say with Amex Platinum, it's only one X. And so the cash rewards one is probably my favorite USA credit card, which I have myself. And I think is a pretty good offering that especially if you're in the military, you'll be able to utilize quite often for pretty good benefits because it's simple cash back that you see in your account for every single purchase that you make on a military installation. So that about sums up the best credit cards for military folks. I hope this video is useful for you guys. Once again, if you have data points about cards that might not charge annual fee year after year that you've experienced yourself, let me know or drop in the comment section below so other people can find out themselves or without having to find out for themselves applying for the card. So it saves people a few bucks here and there. We're in the business of helping each other out here. And so if you have that useful information, Information, feel free to share it. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if there's other content you guys might want to see, this is probably one of the few videos that there's like a cross section between my subscriber base, if you want to call it that thus far. I'm sitting at about 3,000 subscribers. So if you're subscribed and you've gotten this far in the video, I appreciate you and uh, what you do to support this channel. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.